Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to actually go in and start using event handlers by binding them. And then we'll talk a little bit about how we can unbind event handlers also. So looking back at our temp calculator, if we go ahead and we just run this. So if we run temp calculator.py, we're going to run into situations here where we could obviously change this here, and if we wanted to convert this to Celsius, it would be nice if we could just hit the return key and actually have it go and es essentially do the exact same thing as hitting calculate. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use event handling to bind to the return event when somebody is already focused on this button, or this input rather, and then when they hit enter, it's going to go and recalculate the value. And this is a really common thing that you would think you might be able to do pretty easily out of the box, or it might just work for you, I guess. But nothing really works that way when you're working with GUI development, because unlike something like web development, where you would have a form and forms automatically have some behavior baked into them, your entry here is just a place for you to enter text. And so if you wanted to do anything when you do anything else, then you need to be a little bit more explicit in what you're doing. So let's come back down into here. And we want to find our temp entry here. And before we pack it, we're going to go ahead and do temp entry bind. And then we're going to bind to the return. And this is one of the events that goes inside of less than and great, greater than symbols. And then we want to do self.convert temp. So if we go and we find convert temp again, it's going to be down here. You'll notice one thing is different here, and that is that an event handler requires an event be accepted by the actual function that it's working with because it's always going to give you one. It's always going to say, this is the event that I got. This is what you were looking for. Here you go. So we need to modify convert temp to actually receive that event, even if we're not going to do anything with it. So for this, we're going to go ahead and do event is none just by default. So let's go ahead and save this. And if we come back down here and we rerun our application, Pull it back over. Now we should be able to type in a number, hit enter, and it's going to go ahead and calculate what we've got. And we're still focused on our field here. So it's a lot easier to just rapidly go make some modifications, hit calculate, and see what you're getting. Not quite as easy as the reactive example that we had before, but it's still going to get the job done in a simple way without requiring us to move our mouse over, click the very specific button that's going to go and calculate it. So that's really binding in a nutshell. You're going to need to learn more about working with the actual events that you're, you're working with, and you'll do that just as you go. But it is handy to actually go and see what the event looks like. So let's go ahead and just say if event print event. We'll go ahead and add that in here. Restart. And just go ahead and calculate that again. So you can see what the event looks like here. It's a key press. The key symbol is going to be return. The key code is going to be this number here, character, etc. X and Y is going to be the position that your mouse was at when you actually clicked it. So these are the bits of information that are going to come across when you get a key press event like this. So it's good to know that the values that you see here are not going to be uniform across all different event types, but you should always know the values that you have as part of the events that you're trying to bind to so that you can do as much as you can with them if you need to do something fancy based on the position of the mouse cursor, for instance. So moving on, let's talk about unbinding. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of what we just typed there. But sometimes we want to unbind something just to maybe disable a functionality or we're adding things to the page that has their own events bound to them. But then we click something else that goes and deletes that widget entirely or something like that. And we want to prevent something from going on there. So a good example that we could do here is we can actually just give the user an option to calculate on enter or returned. And we're going to do this using a checkbox. So let's go ahead and create a new variable here. This is going to be calc on return. And this is going to be a TK Boolean variable, self master. And then let's just say by default, this is true. And then we're going to trace on this because when it changes, we want to go and change the bindings somewhere else. So we're going to do self bind calc on return. 
And that'll be something that we go and implement as a handler function for this. So let's go back down a little bit lower under convert temp. We'll do self or def bind calc on return self and then args. And here we'll say if self calc on return dot get. So if the value is true, then we want to take our temp entry and we want to bind on return self convert temp. Otherwise, we want to take our temp entry and we want to unbind on the return value. So notice that we just need to type in the event name for this because we're just saying don't listen for this event. It doesn't matter anymore. So this will allow us to go ahead and set up our bindings accordingly using this particular function. And actually, if we go up above, we can go where we actually originally set this up on temp entry. We can get rid of this and we can just call self bind calc on return right away. And that way, this will always be configured correctly based off of whatever the default value of our calc on return is. So if we decided that we wanted this to be false by default, then by changing this out to always call this function, we're going to get that good default behavior and we won't have any weird bugs where we're accidentally doing it kind of in reverse for the first time. So let's go ahead and save and we'll come down here and rerun our application. And actually that doesn't make any sense because we didn't add it yet. So let's go ahead and come down here underneath format Fahrenheit. And we'll do calc on return checkbox equals TK check button. And this is going to be on master with the text of calculate on return. Enter. And then it's just going to be tied directly to the variable of self calc on return. Now we need to call calc on return checkbox pack just to make sure that it gets added to the window. And we'll run this again. And we can see here that we have a checkbox. And if we go and we set this to 11 and hit enter, it's going to go and calculate this. If we change this and we set this to 15 and hit enter, nothing happens, but then we can come down here and calculate. And if we check it again, we change this to one and hit enter, it's going to go back to being bound. So we're able to modify these bindings on the fly by using bind and unbind in a separate handler that can go and add these things after the fact. So those are really the two important functions that you need to deal with when we're working with event handling. That's going to be binding and unbinding and learning what the various events types are that you can work with is incredibly handy and types such as button one or button three or return as we've seen here can be really, really useful.